So at the very top of the list of famous works by George Caleb Bingham, I would have to put Fur Traders Descending the Missouri. This is an amazing work of art, quintessential Bingham. The curator here at the Met, Henry Wheel, was out wandering um, on Madison one day and spotted it in the window. And he recognized it as a great, iconic masterpiece, even though he didn't know who Bingham was at the time. American art history or American art in the United States really comes out of a self-taught world. Artists who were looking at prints that came over from England and from Europe that were uh, ordering pigments and just sort of figuring it out on, them, on their own. And certainly Bingham belongs to that world. Bingham would have seen itinerant portrait painters who would come to Mid Missouri. He supposedly uh, got to see Chester Harding, one of the top uh, portrait artists in this part of the country. He came to Franklin, Missouri and worked on a portrait of Daniel Boone. So Bingham from that single example sort of set off and, and within a very few short years he completely outran Chester Harding and became, you know, one of the most prominent painters in the United States at the time, still living in Missouri. When Bingham decides to get married, he marries a young lady from Boonville, uh, Elizabeth Hutchinson, and he decides that he wants to set up house in Arrow Rock. This is Bingham's dream home, if you will. This is the place where he is going to raise a family. And even when he goes to Washington, D.C. later in his life, he talks about how he w wishes he could come back to Arrow Rock. He wishes he could make a living in Arrow Rock because he considers it perhaps this very idyllic place. He wanted, you know, East Coast people to understand the romance and the importance of the economic engine of his region, of these rivers and their economy. So what he does is he creates this great portfolio of drawings of Western types, these iconic characters. His drawings are amazing. They're um, really uh, tour de forces in their own right. In 1846, the American Art Union purchased the amazing Jolly Flat Boatman, and that is the picture that a year later was widely disseminated to more than 10,000 American Art Union members, not only making the picture incredibly famous, but George Caleb Bingham as well. You know, we still romanticize about the Westerner, and so Bingham really was one of the most prominent Western painters of the time, which is a, you know, a very unique thing for the United States. As soon as it becomes clear that there is going to be war, civil war in Missouri, Bingham sides with the Union. The conflict on the Kansas-Missouri border escalates at a, an incredibly rapid pace. The civilians become targets of the military. And in one of those um, efforts, to do something about the guerrilla activity, the female relatives of several guerrillas were imprisoned. So they decide to convert a, an empty house into a holding facility for these women. So whose house do you suppose they decide to use but the empty home of George Caleb Bingham? Whatever the cause, the building becomes unstable. It collapses and five of the women are killed. If you can take war to civilians, the people in western Missouri decided, those, those Confederate sympathizers decide, we'll give you war on civilians. And Thomas Ewing ultimately issues General Order Number 11. So we have residents in the western counties of Missouri, in Cass and Bates, Jackson and Northern, uh, Vernon counties, being told to evacuate no matter what their political stripe. Bingham, as a resident of Missouri, but also as a supporter of the Union, was, was conflicted. And it took him a while before he was able to uh, get that out in paint, but he painted two pictures on the theme of Order Number 11, in which he uh, criticized in paint this martial law. He was accused of being a Southern sympathizer, but he wrote extensively about how that was not the case, how he was not advocating for slavery, how he was not sympathizing for the Confederate cause, but how he felt that his pictures were about liberty and they were about freedom, and it was against uh, martial law. Most of his most accomplished 
paintings ended up in private collections, so they were not in public collections to be seen and studied. He also ended up giving his drawing collection away, which was this incredible treasure trove. So the evidence of his artistic career was not publicly available. In the 30s, the 1930s, narrative painting becomes very interesting again. You have the rise of the regionalists. We think of Thomas Hart Benton, another Missourian, uh, Grant Wood, um, and those sorts of artists who were painting everyday scenes again, genre scenes. And so they look back at the leader of genre painting in the 19th century, and he really has a revival of interest at the time. Well, I really think you have to call him an American artist. The paintings themselves speak to a much more mythic, larger vision of the Western frontier. When we think about Bingham today, it's impossible not to remember all of those faces of the Missourians that he painted, the scenes of riverboats, the scenes of political life on the frontier, and the way that he constructed an American identity out of that stuff of the frontier, out of Missouri, yet an identity that had resonance on a national scale.